Hey y'all, my name is Tyson and this week we're talking inference locking. So inference locking is your way to turbocharge basic inferencing in SketchUp. It'll make you really efficient, speed up your ability to use SketchUp. But what we see is that beginners and maybe even people who've been using SketchUp for a while aren't really that used to jumping in and out of inference locking. And there's a couple ways to use it that I think aren't fully utilized. So what we're going to do in this session is create just a few basic uh, examples that we can use to practice inference locking. Try to up your game. All right, so the basics of inferencing are that you can draw and move and find the red and the green and the blue axis and even hover over and find non-axis or uh, directions, which we might call diagonal, but just parallel to non-axis directions. Inference locking, the sequence, is that you're going to find one of these directions and then you're going to hold the shift key down and that will lock that direction. Now as long as you hold the shift key down you can reference other geometry very easily. If I let go of the shift key I'm free to find a different direction. And that's the sequence. Find a direction, hold the shift key down to lock it, reference other geometry, and then let go of shift and you can find something else. Now another way to do this is with the arrow keys. You can tap the right arrow key and lock the red direction. The left arrow key will auto lock the green direction. The up arrow key will lock the blue vertical direction and the down arrow key will lock to that non-axis direction, whichever the last one you've sort of focused on. Now there are some differences in using the arrow keys and the shift key and there's some things that uh, you can do with the shift key that you cannot do with the arrow keys. So it's worth knowing how to use both. Let's practice a little bit. So over here, I'm going to draw a line, let's say in the green direction and then draw a couple of diagonal lines. and then select those and group them. I do want to make sure I didn't draw anything vertical and so they're all on the same plane. I'm going to move that group, copy it, and then rotate it and maybe make one more copy. This is a simple exercise. We're not drawing anything specific. I just want to be able to hover, find an edge, and then lock whatever direction uh, you know I'm finding. So I'm got this edge. I could tap the down arrow key to lock it. If I tap the down arrow key again it will be perpendicular and tap it again to lose that. Or again if I find it I can hold the shift key down to lock it as well. As long as I've got it locked by holding the shift key or pressing that arrow key I'm going to reference other geometry and it's going to jump. Now notice the difference between referencing a point versus referencing a full edge. Because you might want to do either of those, but you don't want to click on a point if what you really want is the edge. So in this case, let's say I reference this edge, click, and then I'm going to let go of the shift key and find another direction. This time, let's say I hover over this edge. Now I can find that parallel edge, hold the shift key, and hover over this one. Click, let go of the shift key. Uh, maybe hover over this one. And this time I'll tap the down arrow key. Oh, it's still got this other edge selected. So I'm going to cycle through, tap the down arrow keys a couple times. All right, I'm going to hover over it, find it. Oh, it's very near my red so I've got to be a little careful but I'll tap the down arrow key and maybe reference to here. 
The shape doesn't matter. This is just a way to sort of jump in and out of inference lock and to practice finding uh, various intersecting points of these edges. That's all this is. Now, one of the things that I think some people don't realize is that the idea that you find a direction, I think a lot of people think that, well, you have to find an uh, axis direction or a parallel direction first, then lock it. And that makes sort of a sense, but you can, I'm going to hit escape. This time, I'm just going to hover over any of these edges. Let's say this. I'm not drawing an edge. I'm just hovering, and I'm going to hold the shift key down. I am holding the shift key, and you can see that I'm locked to that edge. And I haven't even started drawing anything. I haven't clicked anywhere. But as long as I hold the shift key down, I get that same functionality that I can reference other geometry, say this edge here, click, and now I've started drawing my edge, but I've drawn it at the point where these two intersect. So, try that. Try hovering over an edge, holding the shift key, hovering over another edge and clicking, and now you've started your edge there. Now I'll hover, say, here, find that, lock it to this point, just start drawing random shapes that are at intersecting points of these edges. Now let's create one more simple example. I'm going to just draw a box and another box and we'll create a basic roof. So I'm going to split this top edge midpoint to midpoint, select that edge, use the move tool and move it up some amount. <clears throat> doesn't matter so much how much, we just need some roof like this. Remember, our intent is to practice inference locking. There's a lot of ways that we could sort of draw additional roofs here that might be more efficient, but we want to practice inference locking. So, in this case, I'm going to hover over this edge here and hold the shift key. Now, I haven't started drawing anything but I am locked to that edge just by hovering and holding the shift key on it. Now I'll reference this surface or one of these edges and click there. What that does is that starts my line in line with that surface. And now that I've got a line, I will hover over this edge and that will give me the parallel and I'll draw down, say, to this top surface and click there. Now, just because we're doing this the long way, I'm going to draw in a few more points here. Find this edge, lock to it, and that should give us this part of this roof. And let's say we want to extend that down. Well, of course, there's many ways we could do it. We could find that parallel, lock it, move down to here, and continue, but another way we could do this is to use the move tool, say with this edge. We select that edge, use the move tool. I can move it in any direction, but if I tap the up arrow key, I'm locked in the blue direction. And then I just need to hover over one of these other surfaces to get it lined up exactly. Now I could hover over this point or this point to reference those, but I'm going to hover over the surface, click there, and now we have all of those surfaces lined up. Let's do one more quick example. I'm going to undo this again with using the move tool. Let's say rather than drawing that edge, I use the move tool, select this edge, and then I want to copy it. So I'm going to select this point up here. Of course, it's warping my geometry. So tap the control key on Windows or the option key on Mac to move a copy. And I want to move a copy down here. But where to? Well, I can just hover over this edge, hold the shift key, and now again I'm locked to that edge. And I could put it back here, I could put it up here, wherever I need to put it. If I erase that, select this, use the move tool, make a copy. And I'm going to lock this direction again and move it exactly back to here. Now, there's so many 
ways to uh, to draw something like this and many ways to use inference locking. So the best way to practice inference locking is just sort of to force yourself into drawing things the long way. And roofs are an excellent example for practice. Um, what I would challenge you to do is to create just some random shape of, uh, let's say, you know, a floor plan. Whatever it is, something like this. Oops, I don't want perspective. I want to pull that up. And then start drawing ridge lines and trying to resolve roof shapes together. It's a great way to practice inference locking. And as always, you can sort of up this challenge by introducing some diagonals. So if I said, well, we've got part of this floor plan that goes off like this. That will introduce a different part of a challenge. So challenge yourself, learn more about inference locking, learn to do it with uh, the arrow keys and the shift key. Hope that was helpful. Let us know if you want in a future uh, skill builder, we could actually do a more complex roof if that's something you're interested in. Whatever it is you're interested in, let us know in the comments because we want to make these videos something that you enjoy and that you learn from. So let us know what you thought and let us know what you'd like to learn next. We make these videos often, so please do subscribe to see all of them coming your way. And otherwise, thanks y'all. We'll see you next time.